Good morning. You know, this coming Sunday, July the 25th, is going to be the first in St. Luke's on Broadway. We begin our sermon series that will run for six weeks all the way through the end of August. You know, this year we're going to be opening with Phantom of the Opera. It is the most successful and longest running musical in Broadway history. It's an amazing show, and we are going to be so blessed to have Aaron LaCroix, who has been singing the part of Christine Day in Phantom of the Opera on Broadway at St. Luke's to sing that part. And we're going to have Tamara Green, who sings the part of George Washington in Hamilton on Broadway, there to be singing the music as well. If you came to our concert a little while ago, about a month, month and a half ago, you know that these two people have an incredible gift from God and have used it and are phenomenal singers and they will be inspiring us all. You know, it was said that Phantom of the Opera was written about a man who was obsessed with a beautiful singer. And it was written by a man who was obsessed with a beautiful singer. It really is. The story of Phantom of the Opera was written by Andrew Lloyd Webber because he was so in love with his, his wife, Sarah Brighton. He wrote this musical for her. It was supposed to be a romance, a romance, and he wanted her to be able to star. That's why Phantom of the Opera was written. And it was so incredibly successful. Today, more than 100 million people around the world have seen Phantom of the Opera. Exactly what Andrew wanted to have happen for Sarah did come true. The pressure, though, from all the publicity, all the scrutiny, all the pressures of fame, you and I can't really appreciate. But it took a toll on their relationship. And in the end, they got divorced. They are still good friends, but they are no longer married. Andrew has continued on in music and theater, but Sarah didn't really continue on in theater and doing other shows after Phantom. No, she went into giving concerts around the world, creating albums. She is a soprano and one of the most successful sopranos in the world. She truly is phenomenal. She has been the only person who's been invited to sing the theme song at an Olympics twice. 1992 in Barcelona, Spain, she sang the opening theme song. And 2008 in Beijing, China, she did it there too. I guess it didn't hurt that she can sing in 11 different languages. Now here she was creating all these albums, concerts, singing at these at the Olympics, usually to about 4 billion people. What we didn't know was in 2010, she started training to go to the space station. She's going to be an astronaut. She paid 31 million Canadian dollars to be able to buy a ticket on the Russian uh, Soyuz um, space shuttle. She went to Russia and trained right outside of Moscow for five years. Her dream was to go to the space station and there to sing something beautiful that Andrew was going to choose for her. She had passed all the tests, she passed all the rigors, she had done it all, and then a few months before she was supposed to go into space, she announced she wasn't going to get to go. It finally came out that there was great disagreement in her family, her mother. Her mother was so against her going into space. Her husband, Sarah's father, had committed suicide. There was great stress in the family. We don't know all the details, Sarah won't share them, but she said it's a decision that I had to make for the good of all. So she didn't go into space. And now after having kind of withdrawn from the world for five years to being doing nothing but training and, and preparing for space, she kind of wanted to re-enter the world. She went and spent some time on the beach with a close friend, uh, a singing coach, and she just began to think about life and then to sing, and then to practice, to take that time to come back to the world. And she came out with a new album. And the album she created after that experience of training to go to space was entitled, Him. You see, she loved the feeling she had while singing in a church choir as a child growing up. And she felt it was time to focus on the spiritual after she had focused so much on space. 
I want to read you what she had to say. I really, really wanted to do something that sort of was enlightening. All those biblical rules that we've been given, they're very simple rules. I mean about goodness, looking after your neighbor, enjoying the moment, being enlightened as much as you can in life because it's a short time that we're all here. And all of those are simple rules. To remember the simple rules. As we live our lives in a world of science and all these other things, we must stay grounded spiritually. To remember the simple rules. All those things about goodness, loving your neighbor, enjoying the moment, being enlightened. That's what we're gonna think about as we go into St. Luke's on Broadway, all of those simple biblical rules that we know ground our faith as we look at all of life. We're gonna have a great time, and I hope you begin preparing yourself this week, thinking about those fundamentals of life as we prepare to celebrate St. Luke's on Broadway. I hope you have a great day.